Assalamualaikum everyone. So I'm back with another lesson that is on periodic table. Uh, as far as the basic dynamics of periodic tables are concerned, uh, we discussed most of them uh, when we started chemical bonding. Uh, but we, I'm going to give you a quick recap uh, of what did we study and uh, some further concepts that you need to understand. Okay. Okay. So first of all, periodic table is split into rows and columns. The columns are called groups. There are eight groups in total: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the rows are called periods. There are one period one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let me say three, four, five, six, and then seven as well. Uh, this you just need to know is that the rows are called periods and the columns are called groups. Now, as you can see, uh, all the elements are arranged on the basis of their atomic numbers, increasing atomic numbers. Hydrogen has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on and so forth. So that's how, that's how it's going on, that's how they are arranged. Uh, you need to understand that every element, that the position of every element says a lot about that particular element. For example, I told you that all the group 1 elements, all the group 1 elements, they are in group 1 because they have one electron in their outermost charge. So the charges, charges of group 1 elements will be plus 1. And uh, as far as the group 2 is concerned, all the elements in group 2 will have two electrons in their outermost shell, so they are going to donate two electrons and will have a plus 2 charge. All the group 3 elements will have 3 electrons in their outermost shell and they are going to donate 3 electrons and they will have a plus 3 charge. Group 5 elements have 5 electrons in their outermost shell so they are going to accept 3 electrons there will be minus 3 charge. 6 group will have minus 2, 7 will have minus 1 and uh, this is the 0th group or 8th group called noble gases. They do not have any charge at all and between group 2 and group 3 there are elements which are called transition elements. They do not belong to any group because they do not have one charge, they can have multiple charges. That's why when we were doing chemical equations, for example, when we, let's say, wrote copper sulfate. So they were always like, uh, copper sulfate was always written as copper 2 sulfate. Because copper can exist as plus 2 as well as plus 1. So they always tell you that it's copper 2 sulfate, so uh, the 2 means the copper has a plus 2 charge. They, they tell you the charge because you cannot cannot deduce it from the periodic table because transition elements uh, are not uh, allocated in any group. They are present between two and three groups. Okay, uh, so this block of elements are called transition elements, or we can also call them T block elements. T block elements. Okay, so uh, we discussed the electronic configurations of all these groups. Other than that. Uh, you need to understand that uh, down the group, when you're going down the group, number of electrons remain the same. But when you're going across the period, for example, what does period 2 mean? Period 2 means that all the elements in period 2 will have 2 shells. All the elements in period 3 will have 3 shells. All the elements in period 4 will have 4 shells. And that's how it goes on. Okay? Yes, these are the some things that you need to understand. Uh, before we go on to discussing various groups and their properties, uh, now let's move on to the um, let's move on to group one, which are called alkali metals. Group one uh, is called alkali metals. Okay, uh, we are going to discuss their properties. Their properties can be divided into two types, as in that there are some unique properties. There are some unique properties. Uh, as in that uh, alkali metals have some properties which are not characteristic of most of the properties of other metals. Generally metals do not have those properties but alkali metals do. Again okay, there are some common properties. Okay. What are those unique properties? Uh, alkali metals are soft. They are soft. So soft that they can be cut with a knife. Uh, metals generally are not soft. As a result they will have low density. 
right? They'll have low density. Since they're soft, they'll have soft actually means that they're weak uh, intermolecular forces, which means that they'll have low melting points, right? Which is not the case with most of the metals. Okay, they are these are some unique properties. What about the common ones? They are good conductors of electricity. They are good conductors of electricity. Right? And the other one is that they are shiny. They have some common properties with other elements, other, other metals, sorry. Okay, now let's talk about the chemical properties. Let's talk about their chemical properties. Okay, chemical properties. Uh, you will be asked to, to know, you will be required to know actually about uh, the reaction of alkali metals with water. Okay, uh, you need to know one thing that uh, the reactivity of alkali metals starting from lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium, uh, the reactivity of alkali metal increase down the group. Reactivity increases down the group down the group, which means that uh, lithium is going to give you least vigorous reaction and cesium is going to give you most vigorous reaction, cesium being most reactive and lithium being least reactive in the among the alkali metals. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the chemical properties which are the reactions with water. All of them react identically uh, with water, lithium will react with water. Uh, to form lithium hydroxide, okay, so lithium hydroxide, and there will be hydrogen formed, half a mole of hydrogen formed, and uh, sodium will react the same way. Uh, no sodium hydroxide will be formed, plus half a mole of hydrogen, and uh, potassium will be formed the same way. Potassium hydroxide will be formed along with half mole of hydrogen. Rubidium will react the same way. Their intensity or their uh, what we can call their uh, yes intensity it, it is going to vary. It is going to increase down the group. Rubidium the reaction of rubidium with water is going to be much more intense or what you can say violent as compared to let's say lithium. So again, rubidium hydroxide will be formed along with half a mole of hydrogen and uh, and then there is cesium left. It will form, it will react with water to form cesium hydroxide and a half mole of hydrogen. Now, you need to know uh, with their observation, they often ask you about what, what happens when lithium reacts with water. So, you say that uh, uh, lithium floats on water, floats on water, floats on water until it dissolves, until it dissolves. And produces fizzing, and fizzing can be observed, and fizzing can be observed. Fizzing can be observed. Okay, or you can say it floats on water. Uh, you can also add that it reacts vigorously, vigorously, and floats on water until it dissolves. And uh, moving on to sodium, it will react more vigorously with potassium. You will have to add that potassium reacts. Uh, a bit violently with water, so much that it it catches fire. It catches fire. Okay. What about rubidium? Uh, rubidium reacts with water, and obviously it is going to react violently. So basically, the, the intensity are going to increase. But what is common among all of them? There is going to be fizzing in the sense that there is going to be hydrogen evolved. But in the last two cases. They are so violent, they are so violent and dangerous that they are not recommended that we, uh, that we do them because they, they are explosions are there. Okay? Uh, literally when you add rubidium to water, uh, they, you can expect a mini explosion. Okay? Uh, so that was the chemical properties of alkali metal. You just need to know that uh, how all of them react to water to form their respective hydroxide and half a mole of hydrogen uh, and you need to know the observations. That how when they react, how do they look or how do they uh, behave, which are which is visible to the eye. Now moving on to uh, another group that is uh, halogens. We are going to discuss now halogens. 
halogens are in group 7 elements group 7 elements okay and you have fluorine fluorine bromine iodine acetine okay all of them are diatomic down the group their reactivity decreases unlike alkali metals whose reactivity increase uh, the reactivity of uh, halogens decrease down the group which means that fluorine is going to be most reactive and acetine is going to be least reactive you know, you need to know their states as in how uh, in what state in what physical state do they exist at room temperature you need to know their appearance as in color okay okay now uh, fluorine is a gas fluorine is a gas bromine is a liquid iodine is a solid and acetine is also a solid as far as their appearance goes fluorine uh, is a pale yellow gas pale yellow gas okay chlorine is greenish yellow greenish yellow then you have uh, bromine that is a red brown liquid uh, iodine is gray solid and acetine is black if you can notice a trend over here in terms of their appearance you can simply say that the, the color is getting darker the color is getting darker okay so uh, let's talk about some of their reactions the the most important reaction that they give is called displacement reaction what displacement reaction what does displacement mean it means uh, one halogen is taking another halogen's place okay so uh, the philosophy behind a displacement reaction of halogens is that the more reactive halogen is going to displace a less reactive halogen okay so this reaction can only happen when more reactive halogen is actually looking to displace a less reactive halogen it will never happen if a less reactive halogen is looking to replace or displace a more reactive halogen let me get down to it uh, let's say chlorine is reacting with oh that weird combination of colors now let's go back to our green color so let's say chlorine is being is reacting uh, with potassium bromide okay. now bromine is less reactive than chlorine so chlorine and what does chlorine do here chlorine will displace bromine and will take its place and bromine will be formed you should not you would never write any halogen as simple cl or br you will always write it as diatomic because they are diatomic molecules remember remember don't forget it that they are diatomic molecules diatomic i already told you in, uh, in, in one of the previous sessions what diatomic means uh, okay so let's say if this the same reaction was happening with potassium fluoride right potassium fluoride now chlorine is less reactive than fluorine so there won't be any reaction here okay so it's important that uh, that the halogen that is looking to knock out another halogen that particular halogen has to be more reactive okay so that is what displacement reaction is all about now moving on to another group of elements which are called noble gases they do not have uh, any any chemical property per se we'll be discussing its uses primarily so we have noble gases are inert you are already know inert means unreactive why because they have complete outermost shell so they do not have any interest in giving or taking electrons which means that they are not interested in reacting at all okay so we have helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon so these are the uh, noble gases in this order in their respective group they exist all of them are gases and they are monatomic gases if they uh, if they ask you which gases uh, are monatomic so it's say noble gases other than that uh, most of the elemental gases are actually all of the elemental gases are 
elemental gases which means hydrogen nitrogen which do not which have only one element most of the elemental gases or all of the elemental gases are uh, diatomic except for noble gases now let's talk about the uses the uses so helium is using helium balloons sort of stuff so uh, uh, let's they use in basically in airships airships helium airships okay and neon is using advertisement lights you might have seen uh, neon lights okay uh, in and they're using advertisement okay advertising lights uh, argon is used in electric bulbs this chapter mostly revolves around the theory actually you just need to remember uh, this information krypton is used in lasers uh, and xenon is used in xenon is used in flash guns while radon is a radioactive gas so uh, so we actually stay away from using it in other things because it is mighty dangerous okay uh, let's move on to another group of elements which is the last ones which are transition elements transition transition elements again uh, we are going to discuss the their properties that you must remember so their properties can also be classified into unique properties as well as general or common properties to other elements transition elements are all metals so remember that okay uh, so you what are the unique properties the first one is they form colored compounds they form colored compounds whenever you see a colored salt uh, it is bound to ha have a transition element they form colored compound the second unique property they have is that they have variable oxidation states they have variable oxidation states what does this mean it means that they have multiple valencies they can have multiple charges like copper can exist as plus 1 copper can exist as plus 2 iron can exist as plus 2 and plus 3 that's why in chemical equations whenever there is a, there is a transition element containing compound so they always mention like iron 2 sulfate so you'll know that that is the iron that has a plus 2 charge okay and the last one is last unique property is that they are used as catalysts they are used as catalysts now you are going to remember it anyway uh, we are going to discuss it when you study organic chemistry and some other chapters of the like uh, like they like iron is an is a transition element it is used in cable process it is used in cables process or harbors process uh, which is used to make ammonia right there is vanadium oxide vanadium is a uh, transition element it is used in contact process it is used in contact process which is actually a process used to uh, uh, to manufacture sulfuric acid then there is nickel nickel is used to make margarine nickel transition element it is used to make used to make margarine 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 is you normally uh, uh, associated with blue band blue band is a brand name don't write it is used in making blue band blue band is margarine basically okay that you apply on your butter and it's yummy okay so these are the unique properties of transition elements as far as the common properties are concerned so uh, they are great conductors of electricity they are great conductors and they have high densities like other metals have high densities and they have high melting and boiling points high melting but high melting points so that's all from the chapter itself. Uh, this is the theory that you need to remember. Now we're going to move uh, to solve a few past paper questions so that you can apply these concepts. So switching to another screen. Okay, let's start with this question. Mm. A non-metal forms oxides of the type XO2 and XO3. Uh, so they can easily be seen as SO2 and SO3. So it's clearly is sulfur. Yes. Uh, which property would all uh, the hydrogen compounds of group seven elements for this? When you attach hydrogen with group seven elements, which is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, what are, what 
which property would all of them will have they will all be covalent because hydrogen is a non metal and all the group 7 elements is a non metal and non metals combine to form covalent compounds what suggests that metal m is not in group 1 of the periodic table group 1 is alkali metal so any property that uh, is not a property of alkali metal would be the answer of this question m has a bright silvery appearance so it uh, it means that m is actually in group 1 so it cannot be the answer m is hard and difficult to cut so that is the answer because you need to identify a property uh, which tells us that m is not in group 1 Uh, all the group elements are very easy to cut. They're soft, so it means that M is not in group one. This statement explains why chemical properties of sodium and potassium are similar because they are in same group of the periodic table. Elements in the same group of periodic table will always have same property. There are some anomalies, but you just need to remember generally that you know, all the elements in the same group will have the will have similar properties. Okay. Okay, moving on to uh, question number seven. A gas G has no smell, is not poisonous, reacts with hydrogen at high temperature and pressure. Carbon monoxide is poisonous, so it can be carbon monoxide. Helium does not react. It's a noble gas. You are left with nitrogen and chlorine. Chlorine uh, has smell. Chlorine has a bleach-like smell, so it cannot be the answer. Nitrogen is not poisonous; it doesn't have any smell, and it reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia. Hydrogen reacts with Hydrogen to form ammonia at high temperature. So answer would be C. Which change in properties of halogens is not correct? Chlorine, bromine, iodine. So you are coming from top to bottom. Chlorine, chlorine, and iodine. Uh, so they get darker in color. So it is correct. It cannot be the answer. Decrease in melting point. Uh, as you go down, uh, gases are turning into gas turns into liquid and then to solid. It means that intermolecular forces are getting stronger which means that when intermolecular forces are getting uh, stronger it means that melting points are going to increase not decrease so answer would be p okay why decrease in rate of fusion cannot be the answer because as you're going down intermolecular forces are getting stronger again molecules are less free to move so it is correct rate of fusion will be slower and density would increase obviously because intermolecular forces are getting stronger as you're going down the curve so answer would be p Okay, a metal X forms oxide with formula XO and X2O3. Now, uh, what? Where is X in the periodic table? Not just understand this. It is forming oxides, which means that uh, it uh, oxides. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, so X, when X is plus two and O is minus two, then it is going to form XO. And when X is plus three and O is minus two, it is going to form X2O3. Right, so it can easily be iron oxide, iron two oxide, iron three oxide. It is, uh, it has variable oxidation states, so it is most likely to be transition element. It is most likely going to be a transition element. Okay, which element in the table is an alkali metal? Now, okay, uh, A and B have melting points below room temperature, which indicates that at room temperature, alkali metal is a liquid, which is not true. Alkali metals are solid at room temperature, so you are left with C and D. Now, alkali metals have low melting points; they do not have this much melting point. Uh, this is usually melting points of this range of melting points is usually uh, applicable to ionic compounds. So, it will have low melting point, and the density would be uh, in you know on the lower side. So, answer would be C. So, uh, which statement is correct for both carbon dioxide and silicon dioxide? They are acidic oxides. Uh, you are going to study this. That non-metal oxides are acidic oxides. The answer actually would be A. Okay. Uh, which statement about the elements in the periodic table is correct? All the elements in the same group of the periodic table have the same reactivity. No. All the elements with four electrons in their outer shells are metals. No, that they can't be metals. An element in group two of the periodic table would form an ion with minus two charge. No, it forms a plus two charge. It can't be the answer. Elements in the same period of the periodic table have the same number of shells and uh, electrons. Uh, shells of electrons. So we did this. Uh, same period means uh, same shell. Second period, uh, all the elements in second period will have two shells. All the elements in third period will have three shells, and so on. Uh, so okay, 
which electronic configurations represent three metallic elements in the same period of the periodic table? Same period means it will have same shells. So this cannot be the answer. And this and and and, and yes, you can exclude this one. Uh, three metallic elements, which means that they have electronic configuration in which uh, electrons are most likely to be donated. Okay. Now this doesn't seem like donation. Either. This this does. In fact, uh, three metallic elements same period. Okay. Now you can see it. Two eight one, two eight two, two eight three. Group one, group two, group three. It's across the same period, and all of them are metals. This is not a metal. This electronic configuration is not for a metal. Okay, and uh, these two electronic configurations are for metals, but this is not for a metal. Answer would be D. An element in then period three and group seven of the periodic table. Period three and group seven. Which element is it? Let's uh, check it. Period three and group seven. So period three, okay, and group seven. The answer is three. Period three and group seven. Story. So, which statement about this element is correct? The element will form plus one ions. No. The element will have three electrons in its outermost shell. No. The element will have seven electrons in its outermost shell. That is correct. Plus it belongs to chlorine. Belongs to group seven. Okay. So I hope that uh, uh, you got uh, the gist of what type of questions uh, they uh, Cambridge usually gives uh, while testing the concepts of uh, periodic table. Uh, okay, so that will be the end of another lesson. I'll be back with another video and we'll be discussing uh, acids and bases, which is again a very important chapter. Until then, uh, I bid you farewell. Take care. Love.